to high five two people and tell them things are turning around for you in this service. You may have your seat majestically. And whilst you do that, please help me appreciate this wonderful music team. Give it up, give it up for them. For an amazing work that they have done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How many of you are blessed to be in the house of the Lord this morning? How many of you are expectant? How many are ready to receive of the Lord? Before we go into the word of the Lord, please help me put your hands together and appreciate one more time our bishop and our mama. I want to appreciate and thank them for their love, for their hospitality, for receiving me with the largeness of their heart. And of course, one more time, please help me appreciate Bishop John for his amazing, amazing love and leadership in my life and in the life of my family. I said in the first service, something I've learned from a very wise man by the name of Dr. D.L. Moody. And he said, I would rather put 10 men to work than do the work of 10 men. Things work in this place because there are men and women who are at work behind the scene. Since I have been here since Thursday, I have received amazing love and incredible hospitality and support from your amazing team, beginning from the protocol detail, those who are driving us, the hospitality team, the welfare team, the cameramen, everybody have made me feel like I'm at home. I want you to help me put your hands together and celebrate your workforce incredible spirit of excellence and I want to appreciate you for your service in these past few days my God will reward you greatly in the name of Jesus this morning I want to quickly go into the word of the Lord I have 31 minutes 22 seconds to do so so turn your Bible with, with me to Ezekiel 37 we read Ezekiel 37 I began to share in the first service what I believe is very very crucial for us as believers in this time and in this season, in this dispensation and in this decade, you know what, for us to be able to move forward and for us to be able to achieve that which God has for us. And the word of the Lord begins saying, the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. God's hand is bringing somebody out today. Whatever the enemy has subject you to, I believe God with you. That in this service, the Spirit of the Lord will bring you out. Shout amen if you believe. Amen. And set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Verse 2. Then it caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many open valley. Very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. It doesn't matter how your situation is, the Lord is going to bring in life into that situation. Today, in the name of Jesus. And he said to me, son of man, can this bone live? So I answered, oh Lord, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall leave. Verse 6, I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you. God is covering somebody's shame in this service today. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. And you shall leave, then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone. Indeed as I looked the sinew and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me prophesy to this breath. Prophesy son of man and say to the breath thus saith the Lord God come from the four winds O breath and breathe this slay on the slain that they, leave, that they may leave. Verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath came into them and they lived and stood up on their feet an exceedingly great army. One of the things I began to say in the first service is that if there's any synonyms to the words that you and I confess on a daily basis or we claim to be the words that I am a believer, I am a Christian if there's any synonyms to those words it will be 
see results and manifestation. The life that we have in God is an evidential life. It's a life that is constantly uh, giving evidence to the fact that we serve a supernatural God. Uh, the life of faith without evidence and proof uh, is a false Christian life. Uh, you and I cannot say that we are believers without uh, manifestation in our lives. And what I'm speaking on this morning is on declarations, manifestation, and demonstration. The life of the believer should be characterized uh, by this sort of result as we see in the book of Ezekiel. I said something in the first service that faith and leadership are very similar in nature. Why? Because they are both predicated on result. Uh, leadership without result is not leadership. Faith without demonstration, faith without manifestation is not faith. It is fake. Uh, it is false. Uh, and we live in a time where there is a growing skepticism uh, of the God you and I worship, of the God you and I so believe in. Uh, but the only way we are going to demonstrate uh, that God, God what we serve, is a great and mighty God is when our life begins to what, uh, demonstrate that which we confess that which we want profess. Uh, and that is why I believe in this season uh, that we need to pay attention uh, to what God is saying in the realm of the spirit. Uh, coming into this year, I began to ask the Lord uh, in my heart uh, and I began to seek the Lord that uh, where, why are there no more commensurate, you know what, result to the faith that we preach in. That we preach it. And like I said in the earlier service, um, we are a generation like Gideon. Who, when the angel of the Lord showed up to him and said, you were great, you were a mighty man of valor. And Gideon answered to the angel and said, we've heard of these great things that we've been taught and we've been told. But right now we want to see some manifestation. We want to see a bit of demonstration of these things that we have been told. I don't know about you, but I am tired of faith without manifestation. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews 11, it said faith is the substance of things. Faith is an intangible force that produces tangible results. Uh, that's why you cannot claim uh, that you have faith uh, and there is no manifestation. There is no demonstration in your life uh, and you should not accept that kind of Christian life. Uh, you should fight everything uh, that is telling you it's okay not to have results uh, as a believer and it's not okay. It's not okay to be a believer without result. It's not okay to be a believer without manifestation in your life. So it therefore means that whatever you need to do uh, to make sure uh, that your life bears fruit. Uh, the Jesus says by their fruit uh, you shall know them. Uh, in other words your life must be yielding result uh, that is in proportion to the faith that you claim uh, that you and I have. Otherwise uh, uh, the integrity of this world integrity of this faith life uh, will be questioned. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the integrity of faith uh, will not be questioned in your life. Uh, the prophet Joel prayed a prayer in the book of uh, Joel. Uh, he said, Lord, do not give us as reproach to the nation lest they ask where is our God. Uh, the only time the nation begin to try and make a mockery of you and I is when we preach and confess uh, and yet there is no tangible evidence uh, of that which we preach. Uh, in the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 8, uh, the Bible says Jesus said you shall receive the Holy Ghost and the power of God shall come upon you and you shall be here. The Greek word for you shall be there is the word esomai. It means with evidence. It means that with proofs. So as you go forth preaching this gospel, your life becomes an evidence. The word did not say to go and witness. He said you shall be witness. It's not talking the talk. It's walking the walk. It's one thing to say. It's another thing to be here. And so when Jesus said you shall be here, it means that you no longer need to say it. When you show up, they know Jesus has showed up. When you show up, they see the manifestation of what God has done in your life, of the spoken, declared word of God in your life. I pray in the name of Jesus that from today, no longer will signs follow you. You will be a sign. When you show up, the sign has showed up. You didn't care what I said this year. You see, I'm tired of people chasing signs all around. When you are supposed to be a sign, the world should look at you and say, I have seen God. The world should look at you and say, yes, I have seen the goodness of God. Thank God for signs following. Thank God for the validation of the spirit of God in our life. But I want to be the validation. I don't know about you. 
I want to be the validation. And so I begin to ask God. I begin to ask God. Why are believers not getting commensurate results and manifestation of the faith life? Why is faith without manifestation trending? We are part of the people promoting that sort of lie. We cannot become comfortable with teachings that make us lackadaisical. Thank God you are not in a place like that. And that is why you should stand up as a voice in this generation. And what I'm beginning to stand against those kind of false things. The life of God in us must be proven. There must be proof that God is in your life. And I came to declare to you this year that this year God will demonstrate through you uh, that he is King Jesus, uh, that he is the Messiah, uh, he is the Lord that healeth, uh, he is the Lord that restoreth, uh, he is the Lord that elevates, uh, he is the Lord that expand and extend in the name of Jesus. Why is faith without manifestation? Why has it become an, an acceptable explanation of kingdom advancement? Why is the church of Jesus has become comfortable with supposed revelation without manifestation? And I began to ask God these questions. And coming into this year in a time of prayer and fasting, the Lord took me to the scripture we read. And he showed me very simply, many things he showed me there that we've been treating even in the U.S. Since last year, December, we've been looking at these things. But one of the very vital things that God has revealed to me is that there, is a, there has to be a speech alignment. There has to be a speech alignment. What does that mean? It means that the declarations of your mouth, it means that the words of your mouth must come back into alignment with the word of the Lord. Ezekiel said, I prophesied. It was not empty prophecy. It was not emotional prophecy. It was not borrowed prophecy. It's not the kind of prophecy of the sons of Sceva that said, in the name of Jesus, Paul preached. We're not talking about borrowed prophecy. He says, you know what? I prophesied as I I was commanded. Uh, this thing came. Uh, Lord, my God aligned my speech with his word. Uh, I did not speak the word of my own accord. I spoke the word of the Lord. Uh, and God said uh, that the mouth of the believers are shut. Uh, you've allowed the enemy to shut your mouth. Uh, you've allowed social structure to shut your mouth. You've allowed society to shut your mouth. Uh, you've allowed policies and legislation uh, to shut your mouth. Uh, I lived in a country in Great Britain uh, where you know where believers became afraid uh, to defend defend the gospel, to even speak uh, in the place of work because of the fear of losing your job. Uh, but I've come to tell you uh, that the devil is a liar. You are in Africa. Nobody is to put in a policy on your lips. Uh, you are the one that has put uh, policies on yourself. Uh, you are the one that allowed that enemy to shut your mouth. But I've come to rebuke that devil uh, because it is time for you and I to arise uh, and begin to declare uh, that which God has called us. Uh, begin to speak loudly. It's it's time to go public uh, with your declaration. It's time to go public uh, with your conviction. Uh, if you believe it, you will say it. Uh, if you know that God is backing you up, uh, you will not be afraid to say what you are. You will not. And God told me that this season, as we are in the body of Christ, I'm going to begin to revisit the issue of our mouth. I'm going to begin to bring an alignment. I will bring my church to that place. Uh, the Bible says by the blessing of the upright. You know what that word blessing means? It's not just talking about your welfare. It's talking about your proclamation. It's talking about your declaration. Huh? That when believers rise huh, and begin to speak, we can see things change. Ezekiel stood uh, in the midst of the greatest austerity uh, and the greatest of what? The economic meltdown uh, and stood and said by this time tomorrow uh, I declare uh, see our bread uh, will be sold for one shekel. Uh, we are back in the days of the prophetic. Uh, we are back in the days of the apostolic uh, where we will arise with boldness uh, and declare what we believe in the word of the Lord uh, that you will look at a dying child uh, and say in two hours uh, you will be up and running uh, and and it shall be so. Uh, you look at that dying business uh, and speak the word of the Lord. Uh, by this time next month, uh, goods you are sold out. 
If Elijah, an ordinary man, can speak to the weather, can speak to the climate, and heaven obeyed, heaven responded, you and I can speak. That's why that scripture in James is one of my favorite scriptures because he did not say Elijah the prophet. We've known him as a prophet. We've known him as a man of God. But that scripture stripped him of every title, bringing every believer into the same authority and power. He said if Elijah, not prophet Elijah, not bishop Elijah, not apostle Elijah, not evangelist Elijah. He said, if Elijah, an ordinary man, my God, an ordinary man, if Elijah can do it, church, you can do it. My brother, you can do it. My sister, you can do it. This thing does not work by title. This thing does not work by position. It works because you're a believer. It works because you're a child of God. If you believe, it shout amen. It's time to change your world with your word. Hebrews 11 3 says by faith we understand church that the world was framed by the words of the Lord. So your world will be framed by your word. So start reframing. If you look at the life you have right now it doesn't look like what you have been promised. It doesn't look like what you desire. You have the power to reframe it. What framed it? What will reframe it? What framed it? What will reframe it? What framed it? What will reframe it? Some of you, you are a victim of negative words you have heard since you were young. You are stupid. You cannot make it. Look at you. You are a dollar. It's okay what he said. But now I begin to speak. I am not stupid. I have the mind of Christ. I'm better ten times than my mate. The mind of Christ is in me. You use the same words spoken against you. You use the same word in your favor. Don't let anybody shush you. Talk to your neighbor. Say, don't shush me. Don't shush me. Don't shush me. Don't shush me. I cannot take it. This is not who I am. Don't tell me to keep quiet. The church can no longer be quiet. The church can no longer be quiet. What makes the word of God powerful in your mouth? Let me quickly run through this. Let me see if I can get past point one. But the point is clear. There is a greater demand on you and I to go back and begin to use our words. I shared in the first service recently, Michael Stampley, the, one of the renowned worshiper, gospel worshiper all across the world, was in Phoenix recently at a conference. And he shared something powerful with us that just stuck with me. And he says, astronauts, all those NASA guys came, in, came into a discovery. And they discover a sound wave that is holding the earth in its position. And these sound waves have been there for ages. They may not understand, but we understand by the word of God. Because God spoke the earth into existence. And he further shared through an information he got through a relationship with somebody who is in the FBI. That when forensic department are trying to uncover a crime made in a particular area. And they detect where the uh, perpetrators of evil probably may have had meetings and discussions about the evil. That there is a device they can put in that room. And, what, and begin to what decode sound waves and it is translated into actual words. Why? Because sound waves never die. So the same words that God spoke earth into existence, that word has not died. That is the word that is keeping earth in its place. You don't understand. That's why you don't understand why Africa, regardless of all the atrocities of the enemy against our continent, we are still standing. You know why? Because there is a prophetic declaration on the continent of Africa. It doesn't matter what comes against us. Africa is in its position. And once we are in our position, we can be restored because of the declaration of the almighty God upon our life. I don't care what the enemy has thrown against you. I can't to announce to you uh, that word spoken over your life uh, even before you were born uh, that sound wave hasn't died uh, that word hasn't died uh, that word is very valid uh, the Lord spoke to my mother concerning me even before I was conceived uh, that you would give birth to a son in fact my mother requested for
for his son. She requested for his son, another a prophetic a mantle of a man called Baba Obadari, an apostle to the nation with signs and wonders and miracles. A blind man, but yet a opened several blinds in my country. A history can never forget this man. And my mother requested for his son under the anointing of this man. But when I came, I came and for 20 years of my life plus, the enemy thought he had me. But what he did not realize that the sound wave over my life did not die. There was an apostle in me. There was a prophet and nation in me. So when I came to Christ, I was at the back side of the desert. I was a dropout from two institutions. But when I had the opportunity given to me by my spiritual father to pastor on campus, I would come every Thursday with my two shoes, no, with my two jeans and two shirts, with a hole under my shoe, with a cardboard to prevent rain from getting in. But when I stand behind that pulpit, I would declare and say, I am going to nations. I am not a local preacher. I will write books. My books will be read all over the world, whether they like to hear it or not. Every Thursday, every Sunday, I declared what I knew concerning my destiny, that I will go to the nations. Today, I cannot even count any longer. I have books that are in Spanish. You don't hear what I said. A Nigerian boy has books in Spanish. I'm telling you, there are things God is waking up in this house today. Your destiny is unfolding. I decree that lines are falling onto you in place and places. How do I know the scripture says, I, Olua Femi Aduna, I shall declare a thing and it shall be established unto me. So I declare this year, get ready for restoration. Get ready for demonstration. You are coming out in the name of Jesus. You don't believe it, right? No, 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 no. You don't believe it. No, 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 you don't believe it. You don't believe it. Because if you believe it, your amen will be louder than that. I am a product of words declared. You will be a product of the word spoken to you. If you accept the wrong word, you become the wrong thing. That's why, listen to me, you don't use thoughts to counter thoughts. You use declaration to counter thoughts. You can't stop evil thoughts from coming to your mind because that's the work of the devil. But when it comes, you don't close your mouth. Oh, you are sick in your thoughts. No, I'm not sick. I'm well. You open your mouth and you make declaration. What makes the word of the Lord in your mouth as though it is God's word? Number one. Number one. Thank you, Jesus. Declaration. For it to be as powerful as the word of God in your mouth must be declared in faith. Declared in faith. Be sure you are full of faith concerning the area you want to see manifestation and declaration. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 to 14. He says, and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we speak. Knowing that he who raised up our Lord Jesus will also raise us up with him and will we be present with you. He said, because I believe, I spoke. What you don't believe, there's no point speaking it. Spoken words without faith is empty words. That's why you may have been speaking things and you've not seen the result yet. Because you have not, you have not passed the prerequisite. There is a requirement for the word in your mouth to become the word of God. And one of them is faith. And faith only comes by hearing the word. So if you are being challenged in the area of finance, don't run around. Settle down with the word of God. Gather relevant books around what God has exposed through men of God concerning his was prosperity plan for you. And once you begin to hear it, it enters into you. Then you begin to decree. In fact, faith when it comes, the response of faith is declaration. He said, if you do not doubt in your heart and you believe, you shall say to this mountain. But faith is the first thing. Luke, Mark, 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 Mark 4, 22 says, have faith in God. Then verse 23 says, if you do not doubt in your heart, you believe, you shall say to this mountain. The response, the first response of faith is declaration. So what do you do? Don't start by declaration. Start by, start by building faith. 
one of the men that have greatly impacted my life is Dr. David Oyediku. And I heard him say many times how when things were not going right in his life, when it comes to the prosperity plan of God for our lives, he said, he took two books, one written by Kenneth Copeland, The Laws of Prosperity, which I've read, changed my life, my wife and I, taught us how to petition God. The second one, God's will for you is prosperity. And he took the third one, the Bible, and went on a mountain for three days. He said he went began to read. Every scripture he was searching. As he read, Pernet Copeland, Gloria Copeland, quoted the scripture, he went to the Bible. He was searching, he was searching, he was searching. He said, on the third day, light came. Somebody say light. And the light that came is in the book of Acts of the Apostles where he says that God is not, there is no, neither Jew or Greek in God. But God is rich unto all nations. Because as at that time, there is a mentality that thinks that riches come from abroad. And God told him, my riches does not come from abroad. It comes from above. Say, God is rich unto all nations. He said, when that word entered him, faith entered him. And this was his declaration. I can never be poor for the rest of my life. When you hear people make such declaration, it is not empty declaration. It's declaration born out of faith. There are things I can tell you now that it's not because I had a man preacher. It was because light came into my heart. Faith was born inside of me. And so today I've been saying it. Every time I prayed uh, in that one room uh, in the back side of Ogun State, I got away, uh, there were things that was jumping at me, uh, praying in the spirit seven hours a day. Uh, I was with a student. I had just given my, I just uh, dropped out of school and I came to Christ. Uh, and all I could do was what to pray. I wasn't a student, but I felt God wanted me to pass on campus. And every day I didn't have a job. <laughs> I would listen to tapes and tapes. Uh, I would read the word of God uh, and I would pray uh, five, six, seven hours a day. God taught me how to pray in adversity and all I will be there Maria Pakata Souza every time I pray get into the fourth hours I will see the map of the world I will shake it off again I will see map of the world I will see the globe of the world that's why I came out to the fellowship members and said I am not a local preacher I'm going to the world they will hear of me and today I cannot keep up with the doors opening over 150 cities this same leg that had a one house shoe I've stepped and declared uh, the goodness of the Lord uh, in over 27 countries and still counting uh, over 150 cities in five years. You don't understand what I'm saying. Faith must be in your heart. Sit down with the word of God. Let me add one more, two more. Barata Susa Bragada. And I'm going to make some declarations over you in the name of Jesus. Number two, faith must be made by revelation. That's what I just teach right now. But I want to give you a scripture. Lamentations 3.37. He said, who is he that says it and it comes to pass if the Lord has not commanded it? That's what Ezekiel said. You know, I prophesied as I was commanded. What does that mean? It was a revelation that I had. You know what that I prophesied from. You remember what Jesus said to his disciples? The Bible says when he was asking his disciples, how do we feed these people? Peter said, send them away. But the scripture says, Jesus himself knew what they will do. John 5.30 he said I can myself do anything but what I see is what I do. He said the son does nothing except the father reveals it to him. Jesus was making declarations by revelation. He saw things before he declared them. And who is the author of revelation? The Holy Spirit. Which means that you must build a more personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. I was sharing a testimony at Summit Faith the other day. Last year, about July, I had a project of what, about 7,500 pounds. And instead of me worrying myself, and there was a deadline of like one week to eat. And instead of me worrying myself, I came into my house and I locked myself in my living room. I said, Lord, there must be a way. And you know what? The scripture that I took to the Lord is, the Bible gave me a revelation through my wife that everything has been written before the foundation of the earth. Which means we are living out what has already been written. And in this chapter, there was a way God did it. All you have to do is to go and reread it. And to reread it requires revelation. So I locked myself in the room. I said, Lord, Brato Sakabari Atazuza, there must be a way. What did you do in the chapter of this stage of my life to, uh, to solve this problem? And it didn't take more than 15 minutes. Somebody say, light came. Say, light came. Light is coming to somebody in this service. In the name of Jesus. 
I tell you, I'll save you the details. Sir. Within less than 24 hours, the old bill was completely made by instruction. God gave me a revelation of how he did it from the foundation of the earth. He only revealed it to me. And I told my wife a declaration. I said, this problem is solved. You don't speak without revelation. You don't speak. Jesus was saying everything because there was first a revelation of what he will do. Are you listening to me? So when you go to prayer, it is not the longevity of the hours you spend in the prayer. It is the revelation you come out of prayer with that makes prayer effective. That makes prayer effective. So, so many people go into prayer long hours. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you go to prayer, make sure that you are asking the Lord, how did you do it? Where's the revelation? When they said it was impossible to Nebuchadnezzar, death was killing all the astrologers and the advisors. Daniel said, give me some time. Went back to his companion and lifted up their voice and said, Lord, you are the God that reveals secrets to all men. Lord, what is this? The Bible says that and God revealed to Daniel the king's dream. And that revelation brought about an elevation. Restored the land and brought elevation to Daniel. Are you listening to me, church? Revelation is the key to making your declaration as though God is the one that is speaking it. Every declaration you make out of revelation, no devil can stop it. That's why the Bible says uh, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, it said these things, uh, it said these mysteries are ordained for our glory. Uh, it is hidden from the natural man. Uh, it said, but to you, the spirit of the Lord will reveal the things of God. Mysteries are not to make you wonder. They are not to confuse you. Uh, they are not to hide God's plan from you. Uh, it is of those that are not of God. Uh, mysteries are coded and you need revelation to uncode it. It's like a treasure box. God has treasures for you and I in mystery. But revelation is what unlocks the mystery and so that you can access the glory in the treasure box. I tell you by the spirit of the Lord somebody's accessing glory. I'm telling you, you are going from here unto greater manifestation unto greater demonstration in the name of Jesus. Peter, who could not even defend himself before a young girl. But when the Holy Ghost came and revelation dawned on him, he gave a whole sermon by revelation. If you look at him, go and read Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. When Peter and James healed the man who has been lame, I want you to read the sermon he gave after. It was a revelation of what he did not know before. That is why he could not see result. You remember, every time they say, Jesus, how come we cannot do this? They lacked revelation. But when revelation came on him, it was that revelation that made them know not to pray long prayers. I say, rise up on your feet and walk. And the man got up and walked. You see, you will sweat without revelation. Revelation is what makes Christian life sweatless. When you see people advancing in the kingdom, they know something. Instead of chasing them up and down, settle down and find your own. Once you find it, life becomes easier. Listen to me. This is not a brag. I can never be stranded anywhere. Why? Because there were certain revelations Many years ago when I came into the Lord, in this quest to find my purpose, every young man around me was a graduate or master's degree holder. In the quest of finding, finding Lord, how do I fit in into this world? I live within a culture that they've, 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 they've defined me as a non-entity. Lord, how do I begin to find myself? And one day the Lord told me, as I began to study, he took me to the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. Huh? That day I was screaming in the office where I served in, the, in the voluntarily in church. Huh? He said when they heard Peter, you know what the Bible says they were uh, amazed they were they were amazed at his uh, unfettered eloquence uh, and they said who is this man uh, who is untrained unlearned uneducated let me bring you to your level he didn't go to school uh, he didn't have degree uh, he didn't have a master's but yet they were amazed uh, and the bible says they realized he had been with jesus uh, that is partial revelation uh, no that is partial knowledge uh, the real revelation is that according to john 
chapter 14 that they were not only with Jesus, now Jesus was in them. And God tell me, as long as you walk with me, I will make you an amazement to the entire world. It doesn't matter the degree you don't have. It doesn't matter the qualification you don't have. I am the one that qualified the unqualified. I jumped up on that day and I said, I can never be at the backside anymore. Something shifted inside of me. Confidence came. Assurance came that even though I had dropped out, God had a plan for me. God had a destiny for me. From that moment, God began to accelerate my results. Revelation is what leads to elevation. Revelation is what makes your declaration powerful as though it's the word of God. He said he himself knew what he would do. Do you want me to give you one more? My time is up. One more. One more. You don't sound like you want one more. Declaration must be made in righteousness. God sits on a righteous throne and what? And declares a thing. You need to understand your position in God. You see, that one of the anything, one of the first thing the enemy has done to rob you of the faith to make declaration is to accuse you of guilt of what you have done. You need to understand your state in Christ. Your state in Christ. Righteousness is not a function of works. Righteousness is a function of faith, of knowing where you are seated in Christ. The righteous judge makes a decree in righteousness, in uprightness. That's what the scripture says in Proverbs 11, 11. He said, by the blessing of the upright, that is what righteousness means. It means our stand in Christ. And the Bible says we are seated in Christ in the heavenly places far above any situation or circumstances. Don't let the enemy say, shut your mouth. Have you forgotten who you used to be? No, you stake your stand in righteousness because your righteousness is what confers authority and dominion on you. The Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. He said there is divination on the lips of a king. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 5 verse 10 that God has made you and I kings and priests. In other words, we are now in Christ and we have the right standing. We have become the upright of the Lord. We have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, therefore as a king in him, we make declaration. Don't make declaration like a beggar. Are you listening to me? David says, since I was young, now I am old. I have never seen, I have never seen, I have never seen the righteous who? The righteous forsaken nor beg for bread. I see people with beggarly attitude, believers with beggarly attitude. You make declaration, begging. Oh, please, Lord, please, please, if you would. No! You stand in your righteousness and make declaration. You are fit to declare. Somebody say, I am fit to declare. Do we make mistakes? Yes. Is this a license to sin? No. But it doesn't change who I am in God. My son, my children, many of you have children here. They make mistakes, but do you disown them? Because they make mistakes. He still has a right. Because it's my hair. My righteousness is not of my own ability. He says, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So before you make a declaration, I need you to bring to remembrance who you are before you talk. A policeman, a law enforcement agent, agent makes a declaration because he's aware of who he is, especially when he's in uniform. Do you know your own uniform? Paul said, I've put on Christ. That's your uniform. You are a law enforcer on this earth. He said, out of Zion shall come forth the law. So when you stand, remember your uniform is the most high ranking uniform that can ever exist on this side of eternity. It is called Christ uniform. It's not a police uniform. It's not a naval uniform. It's not an Air Force uniform. It is Christ uniform. And you stand in your righteousness and declare Hey, stand up to your feet uh, and begin to make declarations uh, begin to make declarations uh, I give you two minutes uh, begin to make declarations uh, Sharabokosa, begin to make declarations open your mouth DC 
listen, listen. It is not called meditation. Are you listening? It is called declaration. Meditation without declaration is just gone halfway. So when God says, begin to make declaration, let us uproot the foundation of this place. Listen to me. This is not for everybody. It's not for everybody. You see, let me tell you something. One of the things that I've saved kept me secured from missing my apostolic ministry. God told me, he said, do not ever make the mistake that I sent you to the crowd. He said, I sent you to one man. Jesus, it is, see, listen to me. What you receive of this grace, your faith is what is going to put you on the line. Jesus was on his way to Jairus' daughter, one person. One person. But everybody that got something, it was their faith that put them on the line. That's why I am not moved. I'm not saying this in a derogatory way. I'm just telling you. God has given me privilege to speak to thousands of people around the world. Strange land. But he always warned me. He said, I went back for one Thomas. I sent you for one person. You guess what? Because God said to Moses, don't make your head swell. It is the cry of Israel that gives you a job. If Israel stop crying, you don't have a job. You only have a job because Israel is crying. So don't think you are too important. They are the ones that make you relevant. I came for one person who is tired of where you are. I came for one person who believed what Bishop declared. That 2020 is your year of restoration and demonstration. And that one person, I want you to cry with me. I will cry with you. I will believe God for you. Open your mouth. Look at the areas the enemy is challenging you and begin to declare. Begin to make declaration. You are coming out. You are going higher. You are going further. Open your mouth this year and begin to declare in the name of Jesus. Come on. Speak over your life. Speak over your children. Speak over your marriage. Barata Susakaya. In Kranondo Supariata Ziga. Pariate Sukapata de Riaka. Jele Breketeso. Barate Sekapataya. Sharia. In Kronos. In Kronos. In Kronos. In Kronos. In Kronos. Pastor. Man of God. Man of God, rise. You heard me said that God said to me that I will write books and this book will go all over the world. Not only has the world fulfilled it, but God has done more than I can ever expect. Today I place the mantle of my writing ministry, the global anointing. Listen to me. From this place, Isaiah 40, he says, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. That was another revelation God gave me when I was in the bush. I was complaining in my heart that my colleagues were in the city and they had access to all these international guest ministers and all of that. And God knew my complaint because I was in the bush. I was in a one room like this, just like here, in front of a latrine. And I was laboring on the field for God. And God gave me Isaiah 40. He said the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. When I read it, I said, so what does that have to do with me? You are making a fool of me now that I'm in the desert preaching. He said, no, 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 no. I want you to look at where the voice is being heard. And I read it was to Jerusalem. It was to the city. God said, John the Baptist was crying in the wilderness. It was heard in the city. City officials were coming. And then he took me to Isaiah 60. He said that the king, Gentiles shall come. You didn't say, he didn't say you shall go. He said, Gentiles shall come to your light. And kings to the brightness. Listen to me. That's why I don't knock on doors. They come and call me. Because there is a revelation. What I'm saying in the desert is heard in the city today. I decree.